Hey guys, Noah here. Welcome back to my channel and in today's episode, I'm gonna show you guys how you can wire up and install LEDs on your underground Whoop League or more recently, underground drone league, Whoops. And this isn't just applying to underground drone league. However, uh, obviously that's what I'm doing it for in today's episode. But if you have a 65 millimeter or a 75 millimeter, whatever Whoop frame you're trying to attach this to, the process will remain the same. But I'm assuming that a lot of you guys are gonna be doing this for you well. So I'm going to show you guys my new pattern that I just wired up on a few of my quads here. As you can see, we've got one on each side and then we've got one in the back. I recommend before you even start planning out your LED configuration for your builds, uh, go ahead and check out the Underground Loop League website, uh, undergroundloopleague.com, and there's some pretty stingent rules on LEDs uh, for the spec, just to make sure your quad is visible enough. I've talked with Isaac at length about this, and while I don't necessarily agree with all of them, uh, they're there for a reason, and he's pretty specific on how your LEDs must be done, so make sure to check that out, because if you're just planning on putting one LED on the back right there, that's not going to be legal, and you might not be able to race. So, uh, Consider that and uh, choose your pattern from there, uh, but then you're going to need to go ahead and order yourself some Cobb LEDs. These are 5 volt, uh, 2.7 millimeter wide, I believe, uh, uh, 2.7 millimeter wide, or I guess they say 3 millimeter wide right there, Cobbs from Fly High FPV. They come in all sorts of colors, but these are the purple ones. Um, that I got and if you're pulling them out of the package and you're like wait that looks like a weird color that I didn't order uh, Sometimes like this obviously doesn't look purple, but when you plug it in obviously it, it turns into purple So don't uh, worry about it too much um, But then you're also gonna need some wire You're gonna need like 30 gauge wire and some magnet wire So like 36 gauge wire is what I use um, and some small heat shrink tubing as well as some different glues uh, to use with your LEDs when you're attaching them to the frame. I like to use E6000 for this. I think it works the best. And then also I recommend getting some of these small clothespins from tinywoop.com. If you don't have these, you can use like zip ties and zip tie around the duct and hold it, but that's a little bit wasteful. So it's totally up to you on what you want to do with this, but I highly recommend these uh, little clothespins from tinywoop.com. They make it super easy when you're installing LEDs. So for this video, guys, I'm just going to use this spare frame here, and this will be good because if I ever go to a UWL event and I end up needing to do a frame swap, I'll have one uh, all ready to go with the LEDs on there so I can just swap the components into this one, solder on uh, the harness to my flight controller, and I will be ready to go and fully LED compliant with a new frame. So speaking of the wire harness, let's go ahead and start with that here. Uh, I'm actually going to start off by taking about an inch of my pod positive and negative wire right here um, and setting that aside. And then this is the magnet wire I use. It is uh, by BN Tech Go, if that's how you say it. Um, but I'll have the links in the description below, of course. Um, but this stuff is pretty handy. It's very small, weighs basically nothing. And essentially what we're gonna do with this to start our wire harness is we're just gonna use the frame for measurement. And I'm gonna go from the center of the frame to the outside of the duct, just like this and fold it in half so that there's basically that length is about from the center of the frame to the outside of the duct. So that's the way that I measure it right there. And of course there are much easier wire harnesses to do, like if you're doing a full wrap all the way around, obviously that is gonna be much easier. Um, but in this case, I like to do this um, this way. I think it looks cool um, having the brakes and the LEDs and that's just how I've done it. Um, and then I'm gonna use this and we're gonna create one more of these exact um, measurements right here. Okay, so with that done, now we have essentially a harness that's gonna split into two. We have a positive and a negative, so two leads that are gonna go each direction in that case. And then I also need ones for the back. Uh, so I'm gonna do this similar thing right here. Um, and kind of cut it just like this, except for these are gonna be individual wires. So um, kind of kind of get them the same length here, but then I'm also gonna cut it in the center, just like so. So now we have these two, which are individual wires, one, two, and then we have our folded over wires just like that. And now I'm gonna bring out my helping hands so we can start soldering here. And I'm going to actually place my wires once I get one end stripped. I'm gonna place my wire in just like this. We'll take my soldering iron. 
and we are going to start off just by tinning the end right here. Get it all nice and tinned just like that. And we're gonna repeat that for our positive lead right here. Now I'm gonna do the exact same thing here for our folded over wires. So let's just place them in right here. And this is the end where the fold is, obviously, so it's not gonna be where they split out. And there's a little loop there, that doesn't really matter. And we're just gonna go over that with our soldering iron, just like that. And you'll see that eventually that enamel coating is gonna come right off and it'll just be one big solder blob ready to go. All right, so once we've gotten to this point, I'm gonna take one of the individual wires and that looks like this. Take one of these and I'm gonna end up wrapping it around. So I'm actually gonna take it out of the grip here and hopefully you guys can still see this. Gonna end up wrapping it around once or twice just like that, very delicately. We're gonna put it back in our grip, just like that. Bring that back to the center of the frame here. Make sure to pinch that over. And now we're gonna try to just solder everything together and make everybody kinda get soldered in. And now I'm gonna come in here with my flush cutters and just trim a little bit of this extra off because we don't need it. Now I'm going to come in with my power lead right here. Just get this soldered in. It doesn't have to look perfect as long as it's nice and shiny like that is, as you can see right there. Um, you will be in good shape. And now you guys can see what you're left with is essentially a three-way harness. We can kind of slowly unravel this one right here. You're left with this three-way harness. Obviously, we need to put a heat piece of heat shrink tubing over the end of this right here. But now we can go out to each side of our cobs and then uh, go to our back cob on this one here as well for our ground. We're going to repeat this process identically for uh, the positive lead as well. Okay, so now with our wire pieces done, we can go ahead and cut some pieces of heat shrink tubing. They're about a half inch long, just like this. You're gonna to wanna to get the smallest stuff you can find. And then we're gonna slide it over top of our solder joint here. And you wanna be very gentle with how you do this. I just like to do it from afar. And it's gonna look something like that. When you're done, make sure that the entire solder joint is covered up. Okay, so we have our cob strip here, and you guys can see on the 2.7 millimeter cobs, uh, every little black mark right here um, is a cut line. So we can cut right here, and that'd be one segment. You know, and then right here, this black mark would make it two segments, and this black mark would make it three segments. So for my design, I use three segments on the sides and two segments in the back. So one, two, three. There's our two side segments, and then I believe I already have a two cut. So then there is two segments right there. All right, so once you remove the backing on the cob here, uh, you need to decide which one of these pads you're gonna solder to. Now, just to remind you, all of my uh, cobs on my design, you solder to the middle somewhere, uh, and that works with these. Uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and have to solder to one of these two um, pads right here. And the way that I like to do that is first just seeing if I can go ahead and get my thumb underneath the adhesive layer. Just like so, you guys can kind of see the adhesive layer is kind of getting pulled up there. And then you can kind of peel that entire layer off right here. Since we're gonna be gluing, it doesn't really matter if this adhesive's on there and this adhesive just makes soldering a lot harder anyways. So when it comes to getting these tinned up and ready to go, uh, what I like to do is I like to just take something heavy and I like to put the end of the strip under there instead of using my helping hands. And this is just because it's a lot easier, it's simpler to do um, and it, Obviously, uh, you can do whatever you want, but this is just how I do it. Um, and then I'm gonna be using these pads for my three segment long uh, ones, and then the center pads for my two segment long uh, version for the back there. And we're just gonna tin them up like this. Nothing too fancy, just like that. And now we're ready to go ahead and solder up our wire harness. 
I'm gonna untwist it. We can see this wire right here is our positive and this one is our negative here. So I like to go ahead and take my solder, bring that in to the frame right there and just tin the wire like so. Tin the wire like so, clean off my iron and then go ahead and take my negative right here solder it into place and get our positive soldered in there as well. And then we're just gonna move down the line and do that exact same process with our negative positive. You wanna make sure you're obviously following the way that uh, they're labeled on the back of the strip. So you make sure you get the polarity correct. All right, and bam, all of our soldering is done. The next thing I'm gonna do is just strip back these two main power leads. Once again, strip them back just like so. And I like to get a little bit more of a, a good strip on these because then what we can do is we can actually test these with a random battery that we have laying around here. The biggest thing when you're testing your wire harness is first things first, round is ground. Obviously you're gonna short it if you plug it in like this. So you want the flat side going to positive, the round side of the BT2 going to ground. So ground wire in, positive wire in. So as you can see right there, all three of our strips have lit up. One, two, three, and that means that we were successful with our wiring harness. Okay, so now I've got my wire harness loosely positioned over the frame. We've got this side gonna go over here, this side's gonna go over there, and then we have our back one gonna go in the back. Just wanna make sure that everything has enough wire to fit. Uh, the way I measured out these wires, you can see that there's plenty of space for me to slide my board and my motors into the frame underneath our wire harness um, when we need to use this frame. So always better to have more wire than less. Um, and especially with this stuff, it's so lightweight. It's never going to be a factor in terms of weight there. Um, but now we're gonna make sure we have our clothespins ready. I like to just duck them out of the bag and have them ready. And I'm gonna take my E6000, I wanna choose my first cob that I'm going to glue up here. We're gonna use this one. And I'm just going to squirt a line of E6000 all the way down the cob. And it could get a little messy and that's totally fine. Doesn't matter if it's messy or not because E6000 pulls up off the frame pretty easily. So you can clean it up after everything is all dry. Now I'm gonna carefully grab that and place it onto the frame as I want it. Obviously the E6000 is kind of getting everywhere all over the frame here, but that's okay. So right, it's gonna be messy in the beginning and that's totally fine. And now once we kind of have that form that we're looking for, I'm going to get my first clothespin, clip it on like so. Make sure we have that end in place where we want it. Then get the next clothespin, clip on the other end, just like this. And then we're going to get the rest of our wires out of the way here and kind of push it in so that it sits on the frame just as we want it, just like that. And then I'm gonna take two more of my clothespins here, clip one right there. Clip one right there. It's definitely a good idea to count how many clothespins you have to make sure you can glue all these up at the same time because if you don't have enough, then obviously it's gonna be difficult to glue them all. But as you can see, now we need to make sure that our cobs are sitting even with the frame how we want them to. So I'm just gonna slide this end up. It's not gonna be perfect. Make sure just to get the look you want. You can mess with this as much as you want until you have the look that you're after. And then once you have that, it's best that you just leave it be and stop touching it. Okay, so now I'm gonna show you guys the other method here, which is where you kind of start to clip in the cob strip before you even glued it. And then now you can see we have a dry fit right here. And now I can just take my E6000 and go from this side
and then take this and now fit that in the way that we want it and attach our clips just like that. And then take the other clips for the non-glued side off and repeat the same process over again. You can install the other clips and now again, same result, but that might be a little bit easier. Try both methods, but remember you have a good amount of time for this E6000 to dry. Uh, it needs about 24 hours, I'd say, to fully harden up. So you'll have about an hour or two before it starts to get thicker and thicker, um, where you can kind of move it around if you've noticed something that you don't like. Um, but again, take as much time as you want to get the result that you are looking for, um, and use the clothespins to kind of hold down on the pressure points um, and get it glued in place. So the last one is going to be our back cob right here. And there we have it. There is the back one on there, just like that. So we got four of our clothespins in on each side and two on the back. That's pretty much all you need to do. The last thing we wanna do is just make sure our solder joints survived the install process. So we're gonna do the same thing. Remember, round is ground. Plug it in, just like so. And bam, I know it's a little bit of an unstable connection, but you can see all three of our lights are good to go. All right, and this is the end result here, all ready to go, just gluing up, and of course, ready for use once that glue is dry. So that's gonna wrap it up for this video, guys. If you have any questions about this process here, feel free to hit me up down in my comment section, but you also might wanna go ahead and make a post in the Underground Drone League Facebook group or Discord server, because there's a lot of guys doing this same exact technique in there that might have experience doing a bunch of different Different setups that I haven't even tried yet. So yeah, that's going to wrap things up. Thanks for watching. If you haven't already, like the video and subscribe to the channel and I'll catch you guys in the next one.